All right, I'm um, here to kind of show through, like stepping through the uh, um, bypass and the fuel density compensator on the LDT 465 deuce and a half multi-fuel engine. And um, the first thing I wanted to point out is that um, this is my rough schematic of before and after bypassing the fuel density compensator. And one of the things that you'll notice, and apparently talking to one of my buddies, this 90 here and this T here, right, can be in either position when you start with this. Um, mechanically, they're equivalent. That doesn't make any difference. So don't get upset by that or confused or anything. Um, because if, say for example, you have this line, right, the return for the injectors, feeding over to a T here and then another line feeding over to here. It's the same thing as having this line, right, hit the T and then a 90 over here, right, on the back side. It just doesn't make any difference, so don't worry about it. Um, roll with it. Okay, so I'm going to step through, like, some of the basic um, things here in terms of how fuel comes in, right? The primary fuel comes in from the line, this pump right here, this is like the main pump. And there's a line that comes out of the bottom of this on the left side, and that's the inlet, right, that feeds from the primary fuel filter. So, um, yeah, feeds from the primary fuel filter. And then this pump comes out, right, this line right here. And it feeds over to the in for the secondary filters and then tapped off of this and I assume this is some sort of a pressure release valve and that sort of business right so this is the return to the tank and then this dude right here feeds over to the hydraulic head right before the fuel density compensator is bypassed so the output, right, or I apologize, the output of the secondary filters comes to the hydraulic head, right? But this um, T here feeds over to the overflow valve on the other side of the hydraulic head, which is, I want to call it the out, but that's probably not the proper term for it. All right, here we go. Um, what else should I cover? All right, we've got the return line from the ejectors. I covered that. And then another thing that's of note is that from the pump down here off the left side, right, it loops around and feeds this filter right here, which is a filter that feeds this quarter inch line. This is all quarter inch line that feeds up past the heat exchanger over to the flame heater. And Obviously, I've got the side of the fender or the hood off and the uh, heater um, out and the hood up to be able to get in to do all this. Okay, so moving right along. What else should I cover? I think that covers it. All right, let's step through bypassing the fuel density compensator. So obviously, our starting point is the output of our secondary fuel filters and wiggle on that dude, it feeds over to this T, right? On the fuel density compensator right here. We don't want the fuel density compensator, so we're gonna disconnect that from the T, right? We're also gonna disconnect this little line right here that feeds over to the entry, or the inlet of the hydraulic head, right? And when we pull that off, one of the ways of bypassing the fuel density compensator is we just take this line, right, and we loop it around like this. And the argument in favor of that is that you could um, hook it up this way, and if you wanted to, you could go back to having the fuel density compensator. I say screw it. I'd rather have a pyrometer installed and a boost gauge and to be able to watch the, the system and if I get in any trouble, get out of the throttle and do it, um, you know, handle things manually, 
versus the way that these machines came from the field, which is you can basically run them balls out eternally and never do anything to overheat the engine. The problem is, is that then you don't have the power you need coming up hills and can't maintain speed very well. So anyway, going back to it, right? If you come from step one, right? This outlet from the primary fuel filters or the secondary fuel filters, you gotta love class. Very classy guys driving by, right? Secondary fuel filters used to feed into the um, uh, fuel density compensator here with this loop going around to the hydraulic head. Instead, if you put this loop in, right, to this T, and move this line, which is too short on my truck to make it, unfortunately. But the concept is if you move this line over and plug it into the hydraulic head, that that bypasses this fuel density compensator. All right, and then, oh, by the way, you're gonna need a 7 16 and a 9 16 inch wrench going through this. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna spin off this T and I'm gonna plug this whole thing right here. And fortunately, I have to, I have no choice but to put a new line on there because it's not long enough to go out of the secondary filters directly into the hydraulic head. The hydraulic head here, this dude, is what makes the high pressure, right? So if you look at the system in a simplistic manner, right, you have the um, tank lift pump feeds pump over to this little pump right here on the side of the injection pump. It pressurizes it up to about 70, 80 PSI, then feeds it around and um, um, to these filters and all that sort of thing and into the hydraulic head. The hydraulic head brings it up to, you know, call it 3,400 PSI. Um, these injectors tested at 3,400 to, or 32 to 3,400 PSI pop pressure. So this hydraulic head and these steel lines, part of the sound you hear of these engines is being hit with um, all that pressure, which makes that kind of clanging noise. Anyway, rocking and rolling along. As you can see, I removed that T. And one of the ways of doing this, right, for the other part of the bypass, right, of the fuel density compensators, to remove this short line right here, right it's a quarter inch line versus the other being a three eighths and instead moving this from the injectors spinning this t off in this 90 and moving this t to here and putting this loop around there right i'm not going to do that right just because i don't want to and what i'm going to do is plug it but one way or the other If you're doing this, you've got to pull this 90. All right, it's spinning off that 90. <laughs> We've got lots of paint chipping off. All right, so there's the 90 fitting. And obviously, I've been leaking a lot of fuel and stuff over time and I pressure wash this thing a couple times this summer already obviously it ain't working and hopefully as a part of this I'll get this leak situation figured out also and that T T for tight. Oh, very notable thing on this side of the hydraulic head here, we've got this control valve and we want to keep that in place. Right? We shouldn't have to goof with that. 
right? So again, spinning off this T, right? If we took this quarter inch line and ran it around like I'm so, and ran this T into the side here, we would have plugged the fuel density compensator. Again, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a plug here and a plug here, take these lines out of the system, right? And it's effectively bypassed. And then what I'm gonna do is take this 90 and run it up into the control valve. Pretty tricky angle here. I'm just trying to show this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to clean this up and put some fresh Teflon tape on these 90s before doing this final assembly. Apparently a cat just landed on this 55 gallon drums. With the thermal expansion they did something. I give up. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to hook this up and hook this um, line back to the uh, injector return right there. And that's it. That's the um, bypassed um, uh, compensator. Again, um, if anybody gets confused, this line here coming from the outlet of the primary filters over there, right? This dude's a little too short to make it. We want this dude to hit the entrance of the hydraulic head right there. So what I'm gonna do, I've got some new lines from um, McMaster Car, um, and I'm gonna replace those, and I'll turn on and do another video here with it all hooked up and step through it again just to make sure I haven't confused anybody. Cool probe.